1967. The internet protocol layer is really interesting because it's illustrative of core principles in the internet. So the first interesting thing about the internet protocol layer is that the packets that are in the layer don't know how they're being carried. Think of them as postcards for a minute. A postcard doesn't actually know whether it's going in a car, or an airplane, a train, or back of a bicycle, and it doesn't care. The postcard doesn't care how it got carried. And that's true of internet packets. They have absolutely no clue what the medium is that, they're, that is carrying them, which meant every time a new communication medium came along, we could sweep it in and put it underneath the internet layer of protocol, because the internet layer didn't care. Then, if you go to the other side, you look at above this, you look at the internet protocol layer, and, the, and that layer doesn't know what it's carrying, just like a postcard doesn't know what you wrote on it. And the, re and the reason that's important is that because the packets are not knowledgeable about the meaning of the bits they're carrying, then the applications are only understood at the next layer up, at the edges of the network. So if you invent a new application, you don't have to change the underlying internet, you just have to change the interpretation of the bits that are flowing around in the packets. So this gave rise to a, a, a paper um, written uh, by uh, a guy whose name I'm not remembering now, but it was called uh, The Rise of the Stupid Network because it didn't know these things and it made it very flexible. When people invented new applications, we didn't have to change the net at all. We just changed the software at the edges. So getting that right, you know, getting these architectural pieces right in order to allow for lots and lots of innovation was part of the key. Mm. If you actually read the Internet Protocol specification, no normal human would do that. But if you did, <laughs> if you did, you discover there is not one word in there about routing. Not one word. There's nothing, even though that's the core of the system, which is to take a packet from the host and route it through the network to get it to go out the other side. But we weren't sure how we were going to do that. So we specified the basic end-to-end -end protocol, and then we said, and then somehow or other, routing happens. It's like that cartoon where there's a bunch of math, and then there's a blank spot, and then there's some more math, and in the middle it says, and then a miracle happens. That, so that's sort of what routing was about. We ended up trying out a whole bunch of different routing protocols. And because we didn't incorporate that into the IP layer as a specification, it allowed us to go try a whole bunch of different things out. So the routing system simply received the packet and then looked in a table which was created somehow by some routing algorithm to say, this is going to that place. Where should I send it? And it says, send it out that link over here. So these sorts of things were just key to, uh, to the architecture.